everybody and welcome to We'd Rather Be Reading. I'm Leah. I'm Jerrica. And this is weird because I never start this. So I'm, I'm already thrown off my game here. What just... is happening? Am I going to take over with the recap this time? Yes. Okay, here Good. we go. This is A Not So Me Cute by Megan Quinn. Mm-hmm. Leah sent me this book, said, we're going to have to buy it because it's not in any of our apps, but... Book Talk tells me that it's super, super, super good, and so do the reviews, so let's just read it. And I was like, you don't need to tell me twice. How cute is this title? I'm yeah. I'm in. Bought it in one second, started reading it the next day, finished it in like, I don't know, a whole, one day, one Something and a half, like two days. And, and honestly, the reason why I chose this book was because there was enough reviews and enough on Book Talk, and yeah. it's exactly my same feeling. This book had no business being as good as it was. No. Like, it is one of those books where you're like, I usually hate all of the tropes in this. I usually oh. hate the premise fully of these books. And, yeah. and like, just reading what it was about, I was like, ugh, this is going to be awful. But when I was reading it, it was great. Oh, my God. This is, is maybe great. one of my favorite, like, romance books of all time. Yeah. So, but I have to say something, and that we haven't even talked about this in so long. But this cover is horrendous. I love this cover. the The cover it is so ridiculous. Yeah, I love this. this is fantastic. It I is so amateur. Forward. It the, the cover. <laughs> the cover yeah. looks like this book is going to be so dumb. The cover looks like this would not be a book you would read. Also, it's called a not so mute cute. I love I, it. I love this cover. I, I, I picked this up in a heartbeat. I, I would go, never. Be, I would I see it. I would be like, store, this is going like, to be a B this book one for is sure. Great, fantastic. It's like <laughs> little little cheruby it cupids. It has here hanging, cupids on hanging the letters. He's sitting there on his couch. It's not an ab in sight. I don't mind. There's hearts, hearts on the cover. Love it. I love it. I He's love it on a so blue couch. Much. He doesn't own a blue couch. It's fantastic. This is a weird cover for it. me. But let I me tell it. you, inside of this cover and this title is a hilarious, oh, it's so, so creative, so, so fun book. So this is what happens. My girl here, she is just Lottie. Lottie. She is a superstar. She is so, 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 so funny, yep. witty, sarcastic, and real. And that's why you like this, this book so much. This is why I like this book. Because this book, the premise and the situations they are in are absolutely ridiculous and outlandish and would most likely not happen to anyone. But <laughs> the way they think about it and the way they talk about it makes them okay. And I think this is really the thing. The way they react to the yeah. actual ridiculous yeah. situation yes. made it okay. Yeah. And for like, I was writing to you while I was reading this, like, I'm surprised you love this so much because this gives me a bit of like feels from that book that I really like that is uh, That Guy Mm -hmm. uh, by Kim Jones, I think. And you didn't like it because it was, she was like babbly and outrageous, but it was unrealistic. And the way he reacted to situations was unrealistic. Yeah, and also her, like, just the way she does things in that book. Like, I don't know, it wasn't... Re- like, I like this one because it starts off with uh, Lottie, uh, Lottie's best friend firing her, like, a week before her one Lottie's year. Lottie's best friend is a horrible person. Oh, she is. She it, they they So they live in L.A. Yeah. And so everyone knows the culture in L.A. is no one is real, mm-hmm. right? Or people that are real sort of stay on the outside Mm -hmm. or get caught up in the unrealness and also become unreal. And then one day they're like, shit, that was a lot of years of being fake Mm -hmm. and then step out of it. So basically when you're living inside, very hard to navigate the realness to the unrealness or fakeness. So she is working for this girl who is her on and off best friend for all of her high school and upbringing. And this was because... This girl was so rich mm-hmm. and so popular, but she treated people like like she could discard them, right? Mm-hmm. So you're my best friend today, and then uh, you're not my best friend tomorrow, but then Sarah's going to be my best friend on Thursday, and then Anna's going to be my best yep. friend on Friday. Very mean girls. Very mean girl, but also like sticking to, you know, what it is kind of like, or what we assume it is, like the stereotypical version of this like but she owns posh. this lifestyle blog that she's trying to now she take does. off and she hired Lottie because Lottie is very good at like building the website creating buzz all of this and that like she's actually really good at what she does yes and she hires her on a 
like on a very reduced salary for the first year because she's building the brand and then yes. she's going to triple her salary once she's been there for a year. One year. And it's now a week before that one year. So she's like, uh, I'm going to get someone much cheaper. There's no way I'm going to triple your salary. Yeah. So she kicks her out. Like She, she has a meeting herself. and she's like, you're going to have to go now. And the, she's like, we're best friends. What are you talking about? And yeah. she's like, oh, did you think I was going to actually pay you all of that? Yeah. I can't. I'm so, going to hire somebody much cheaper than you. And then actually ask the security security to escort her out of the yeah, building yeah. and Lottie's been living on this very very low salary so she's had to stay with her mom and her mom and her mom's boyfriend are hilarious yeah they're like we cannot wait for you to move out can so we can be naked, naked in all the, the times can you on please? the couch you're uh, an adult you're like out. a super grown yeah. adult woman get out and of here the parents live in a neighborhood that's right next door to like the super posh neighborhood and that's why they've been friends throughout high school because Lottie grew up in like a simple home Home, but it was in the it's like close vicinity to a rich like, like, neighborhood. Like, like it's the cross street. Like one yeah. side of the street is super rich, the other side eh, now you're on the moderate paychecks here. You know, like exactly. So she's like bored of town, a different kind of bored yeah, of town. Different what kind we of talked board. about last uh, episode, episode with the fairies. Here yeah. is rich and not so rich. No fairies. Um, <laughs> so. Lottie doesn't want to tell her parents that she lost her job. Right. Uh, so she has this idea that she's just going to move in with her sister and try to find another job. But she also has this crazy plan that she's now going to find herself a millionaire boyfriend. But wait, wait, wait. So she, her and her sister are best friends. Yeah. They're, they're Irish twins, one year apart from yeah. each other. So it's and Kelsey and Lottie. Kelsey and Lottie. And Kelsey is the sister, and she lives in just like a um, one room apartment like she has a studio studio so there's n- no space like she could sleep on the floor but there's no space to actually have her there but anyways she relies on her for her emotional support so and her sister kelsey is starting up her own business of she has organized her own business but she, she she's not big enough that she can hire her Lottie right yes yeah uh, she's organization sustainable organization basically for exactly. for homes and companies yes so lottie calls her sister and she goes over to her mom's house where Lottie is staying. Yeah. And they day drink. And they try to come up with ideas of how she's going to find a new job or make some more money or yeah. where she's going to live. And I love this, like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> There's always stripping, you know. All That's kind of, of like. Yeah, they're stripping uh, and selling but, myself and yeah, all but those. But basically, one of the ideas is that she's going to find herself a billionaire boyfriend uh, by walking around but in it the wasn't rich neighborhood. Well, it wasn't because of that she didn't no. want she didn't want money from the boyfriend no, no. she there is a high school reunion yes. and she wants to stick it to the asshole best friend yes so how is she going to stick it to the best friend she's going to get a billionaire boyfriend to pretend to be yeah. together with her so she's not actually a gold digger in no, this no, scenario no, no, no. she doesn't really want the money or anything she just <laughs> wants the bragging rights so yeah uh, so she says i'm gonna go running in this <laughs> or walking in this rich neighborhood until I find a billionaire yeah. and ask him if he'll go and her sister's to her like, this is a terrible idea, me. don't do that, that's crazy. No one will find a boyfriend that way. And so then, the next day she does. And she, then she does it. She, grow, she wears a crop top and yoga pants and like put, pops in her AirPods and just starts walking around this neighborhood. And, and her sister a, a, calls An expensive her. water bottle off yeah. the ground that she doesn't drink from just so, so she will have. She sees the Fiji water bottle and she's like, oh. I'm going to pick this up and I'm just going to walk around with it like a prop because then people will think I'm also rich because I'm carrying this rich people water. And so her sister calls and her sister's like, what are you up to? And she's She's like, like, I'm not going to tell you, not telling you, (laughs) not happening. And then she tells her anyways. And and on this walk, she runs into our main guy, Huxley. And Huxley is, um, he's together with his two brother owns this real estate company where they do commercial real estate in LA. Development. Development and stuff. And he has his eyes on these two, a couple of lots that are being sold by this other guy, Dave. And he had a meeting with Dave that didn't go very well. And Dave right. is a bit uh, particular. He's not your average businessman. He no. he cares about the relationship of the deal, of the people he makes a deal with. So he right. won't just sell to the highest bidder. Right. And Huxley struggles a bit with this because he's all about the business. business. And he doesn't...
doesn't care for the personal relationships. He and doesn't he's quite have a grump. any he's quite personal a grump. relationships. No. He only hangs out with his brothers. He's perfectly fine with this. No need for anything else. No need for relationships. No. He has, like, maybe, like, fling sometimes. Yeah. That's, like, an agreement. And yeah. he's not, like, particularly a player or anything because he's only focused on the business. Yeah. And then this deal has not gone so well. So he's a little bit bummed about the fact that his meeting with Dave did not go well. And then he goes he doesn't want to lose. To uh, grab lunch for himself and his brother, and lo and behold, he runs into Dave and Dave's fiance from North Carolina, I think, or is that no is Georgia? It? Georgia, George. She's a Georgia peach. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they're pregnant. And in this moment of let's be more personable, mm-hmm. he blurts out that, "Oh, that's funny. My fiance is also from Georgia and pregnant." <laughs> Oh, neighboring towns also. Yeah, yeah, this is great. And Dave and his uh, girlfriend are like, wow, fantastic. This is great. We'd love to meet you guys. Let's hang out. Let's do dinner on Saturday. And Huxley's like, "Mm mm-hmm, yeah, Yeah. dinner Mm -hmm. Saturday, perfect. Mm -hmm. Three days. (laughs) Great. No problem. We'll be there. Uh, So he's now in the desperate need here for a pretend Georgian pregnant fiancé. Exactly. Which he realizes quite quickly, this is going to be hard. Bad. This but is maybe... a bad <laughs> plan. So in his luxury house, um, he's ha- talked this through with his brothers. It's not... Uh, they think he's just he, an they idiot. They think he's an idiot and should yeah. just call Dave and just be like, oh, sorry. Sorry, that was like. a <laughs> moment um, of failure. Uh, but but Huxley doesn't like that idea. So he decides to go for a walk and immediately bumps into our main girl, Lottie, Lottie. who here has... You know, they have similar needs for each other. <laughs> but she hates... Like, Which she's is great. So, she's so mean to him in the very beginning. She's like, ah, oh, how could you dare... Like, how dare you run into me? <laughs> didn't she forget what she was there for? Yeah, but... She I didn't put on like, the charm. She, she's like she was dis- gave up on the whole finding. The, the whole idea of finding a, a rich yeah. billion. She's at this point, she's she's lost. And <laughs> she's she been there has all been day. walking around for a very long time. She's a bit grumpy. <laughs> and she has realized that this idea of finding... A rich husband was maybe not her best idea. So she has gone from being optimistic to being not so optimistic anymore. Right. Uh, when she runs into him and he's like, uh, let's go get food. Uh, so yes. they do. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they set a date, they set a time to meet up for food and they eat burrito bowls and make this plan. And she is not okay with this plan. So she's like, yeah, this is not going to happen. I mm-hmm. don't think so. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but he's like, yeah, I like her. I like her uh, attitude. I think she could be good at this, uh, at being my fake fiance. So but he's going to pursue But they're straight it. up to each other. He's yeah. like, what are you doing here? And she's like, oh, I had this dumb idea to yeah. find this uh, yeah. billionaire boyfriend mm-hmm. to show off at my reunion. And he's like, oh, well, let's have dinner. I have uh, something to throw out there to you, too. But he's, like, a little ominous about it because he doesn't say, P.S., you have to be pretend to be pregnant, nope. too. <laughs> nope. And do you know what I like so much about this book is the ages of these people. Mm-hmm. And she's 28, right? Yeah. I'm and there. she talks in this book all the time about, like, ah. I'm only 28. How am I going to pretend to be pregnant? People aren't pregnant at 28, right? I had two babies by 28. She's like, I have the rest of my life to live before I get to have to th- even think about having yeah. children. And, and this he's is, like 35. He's 36, sir. Yeah. yeah, he's he's. But, uh, there's like, an age gap. But there's there's an ex- seven ex- years, ex- and she ex- says like, "Oh, how do you feel about me being seven years younger? Like a little bit robbing the cradle." Yeah. And he's like, "In my business, there are people like 20 years younger." Yeah, and she's like. Oh, Ugh. like gross men. Yeah. And, and he's like, no, some women. And then she's like, hmm, I suppose for the stamina, that does make sense. <laughs> and then he is like, no, it's actually only men. <laughs> and she's like, hmm, disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love Lottie and I love Huxley. And so anyways, he manages to convince her that they're going to do this. Well, he Im- manages to convince her by going over to her parents' house and inviting himself to dinner with her mom and that. stepdad and saying, hey, we're actually uh, engaged. Engaged. Uh, and they, But they, he wants her to pretend that it's real to everybody other than, of course, her sister knows. Yeah. And his brothers know. Yeah. And then she, they have to sign all of these NDAs and all of this stuff. It's very official. Yeah. Which is good. And I like this. Yeah. And this, this is where this book got me on board because yeah. it is real. Yeah. It's not just 
girl stumbles into the wrong limousine and him's like, oh, well, I guess you're here, so you can might as well stay. Like, it's not <laughs> stupid like that. It's, you know, we both want something out of this. This is a business deal. We yes. will write contracts about it. There will yes. be NDAs. There will be actual consequences. And then right. as the relationship progresses, the rules start getting relaxed and then he ends it with like nullifying their contract basically like getting rid of it because later he is this, later yeah but like but it, it, it along with how the relationship progresses, it progresses yeah. he will get rid of the contract because this is now real we don't need this contract anymore right and, and obviously um and this is what i liked about it because it was it it dealt in a real way with a ridiculous situation Exactly. Because a ridiculous situation can happen and you yeah. can find yourself in an absolutely stupid rich situation. But I think you don't just throw away all like common sense and stuff right. just because you're in this stupid situation. No, you're right. You're so right. this is why it was so good. And but, so he wants to also help her out by taking care of all of her student loans. Thank you for that. Yep. And uh, by hearing out her sister's business pitch. Yep. And for this duration... He's, like, paying for things for her. She has to stay at his house, too, so it, like, well, looks first, legit. first, she's like, I am not staying at your house. Yeah. I'm going to stay at my, yeah. and my sister's. And then she tries to move in there. Turns out she has a bit too much stuff because she's not very organized. That's her sister who's very organized. Exactly. And he comes over and he's like, yeah, no, this is not going to work. Uh, and then he calls his people and they come and move her into his house. Where she has, like, her own, like, comfortable bedroom. He's got a big yeah. house. Yeah. Like, and, and he gives her a Tesla. Nice. To drive around in. And, yeah. Uh, you know. All of this and that, so it it works out. It's a uh, it's a good situation, and yeah. uh, but then and they go to this dinner, and she's she's good, she's good at faking this relationship ship thing. Except he's when she has so the first much. she has the first pitch with her sister, and yeah. his brothers are in the room, and she doesn't know how she should act, so she goes and like no, no, but, pats him on. Oh, the head. for sure, that one's <laughs> hilarious. But like at the dinner with with yes. Dave and and the she was on, she was she's very, on. She's, she's, and it's more him that's a bit stiff towards yeah. her. And, yeah. Um, and then when they go do the pitch and uh, yeah, it's hilarious. There's so many situations in this that is hilarious. It's the, it's when she doesn't know if his brothers know or not. And yes. she just acts like, hi, honey, suckle. Yeah. Bum, bum. Yeah. And then like, pats him on the head and then starts like sitting like, on his and he's lap. Like the, and, like, <laughs> like the fuck is she saying to me? You yeah, know? Like, and then just, she is yeah. acting like a lunatic. And then his, her, her sister gets really upset because she messed up the, the whole pitch by like. Yes. By wasting their time by acting like a weirdo. And then he leaves because of the situation and he doesn't explain anything no. to her. So she gets pissed off at him for leaving, but it was an actual real emergency situation. So it was like... But they do communicate about that later on. It, and yeah. and it's not like she just simmers and resents him, you know? They have, like, good open communication too. But basically what happens throughout the story is that they have to continue to pretend to be a real couple so that Dave and his fiance Ellie Ellie feel uh, like he, like Hux is a good solid person to give these investments to yeah. or I'm agree to, to the sale these of lots, these investments. Yeah. Uh, so they have to go and do whatever basically Dave and Ellie want them to do, which is hilarious. Which is so funny. And yeah. should we spoil it ahead of time or not ahead of we time? We should spoil it ahead of time. Yeah, I think. to make it because make it make sense. It turns out that Ellie and Dave figure out on that first dinner date that Huxley and Lottie are not Pretend. actually a couple; they're pretending. Right. But they also like the energy they have and would like to see them get together. And they yes. would also have a bet on who's going to crack first. Yeah. So. They they start inviting them to these ridiculous activities like the La Masse class. And yeah. I love this so much because they are in LA. And if we know anything about LA is that you can find the weirdest fucking things in LA. Yes. It's just one of those like well-known yes. universal truths that 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 there's La Masse classes and then there's La Masse classes that you can find only in LA. And yes. they go to one of these, which is by can this woman who wants you to reconnect to the moment of conception Seven. where she basically I, makes them I like recreate it. in a room full of other people yep. the sex you had when you conceived a child. Yes. 
And I right now want to die, roll on the floor, laughing hysterically it's at the so image. Funny. Like, how well written was this? Well, it was so well written because they are so awkward. Obviously, they have not had <laughs> sex at this point. So no. this is like their first. They haven't even kissed like no. properly. Like, this is their first intimate kind of time <laughs> together. And it's in a room with like... Um, lots of other couples and Ellie and Dave are, are going really at it going at it and then when Dave stands up with his like serious <laughs> boner and and I love how Huxley was like impressed you yeah, know like yeah, yeah. wow that's a huge yeah. dick <laughs> it is good for you and hilarious. then Ellie tells her that I he gave me an orgasm and, she, and yeah. her inner thoughts was kill me can you please kill me <laughs> Like, can I yeah. just die right This now? is actually a quote from that <laughs> scene where it's um, the the instructor of this uh, uh, Lamas class here. Uh, I can't remember what her name was. Anyways, this she goes and she speaks to um, to Dave and Ellie, and she says, "Dave, such beautiful rhythm, and your eye contact with Ellie. I can feel your passion building up, your loins stirring as you." Prepared to give her your seed. <laughs> and, That's so good. Yeah. And then, but and then she um, she she goes over to Lottie and Huxley, and she calls him Henley, and <laughs> and and Lottie is like, I think we were drunk the night we conceived, and uh, and she's like, Oh, good, I love that. Yeah. Just like letting all the freed, letting yourself free yourself, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And then she's like, Yeah, but no, I don't remember. And she's like. But go on top instead. And he's like... It's like, is this your normal position? And Lottie's like, no, I actually prefer to be on top. And she's like, oh, that's why you look so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hilarious. Um, yeah. <laughs> but then when she does go on top, and they're basically dry humping each other to the instruction from the teacher, not because this is an intimate moment between them, but like stuff starts to stir up and they start to have more attraction to each other because of that moment. So like Ellie and Dave did spark did, their sure. relationship. But I need to read another little passage they from this Lama I scene. Wanted- and this is with Dave's erection, but I, and Lottie's like, but it's a sight to my left that really has me rethinking all my decisions. <laughs> Standing tall and proud, hands on his hips, is Dave with a massive erection poking against his pants. Jesus Christ. <laughs> An image I know I'll never get out of my hand. Nope. Dave is apparently claiming his territory, letting everyone in the room know he's the boner champ. I don't know if I should clap, act horrified, or go wash my eyes out with bleach when I get home. Most likely the latter. <laughs> That's what I mean. It was yeah. her reaction, like their inner their inner like monologues and thoughts were just yeah. pure gold. Yeah, and then she's like, do I really have a choice after what happened this afternoon? I'm pretty sure we're bonded to Ellie and Dave for life. <laughs> <laughs> so then Ellie asks them, uh, asks her to go try on uh, breast pumps. Breast pumps? And is like, this a thing this... <laughs> where you try on I breast pumps? I, I, like, I've but had breast I pumps, can, but... I've like, had breast pumps, too. And I know that there's lots like of different breast... kinds, but I never had to have it fitted to my boob. Like, I've been at the hospital where they're like, nurse is, like, telling you, like, the right way to yeah. do it and best for the nipple, this kinds of stuff, and, like, how to self-express. Yeah. That's what it's called. But I have never seen, like, a fitted breast pump, but only in L.A., right? Only in L.A. And I didn't look up whether this is a real thing or not, but I, I hope sure this is a real thing because, is because we're going to have to go to LA and just pretend to be pregnant done. just so we can go oh to this store. Oh my God, please. So basically at this store, again, amazing writing because the imagery was just there. Like yeah. I could see it. Walls of boobs. Yeah. Right. Where you can just touch them. Where you can touch them and they leak. leak milk. They leak milk. Yeah. Wall and then it's of like, I really need boob. to see your boobs. Yeah. And Ellie's like, Whoop, boob, top off, here's, here's here are my nipples. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then she goes, oh, such hard nipples. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful nipples. And then Lottie's, Lottie's like, like I'm not no. Doing this. And then she's like, oh, you're going to have a hard time. Your nipples are very, very hard. Yeah. <laughs> and it she's like, hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. okay, okay. So what happens in this scene is that Lottie gets a face full of pretend breast milk. And she is so horrified. She goes home, sits on the couch. Huxley comes home and he's like, uh, Lottie, you okay? And she's like, no, I am not okay. I am not okay. 
It is. Uh, <laughs> I will never be okay I will never be again. again for the rest of my life. I am traumatized. I'm pretty sure I have PTSD from this. And this was not in the contract, Huxley. You need you owe me so much more from that. And at this point, their like relationship is a little bit like blossomed. Uh, so he's like caring for her also, and he's legitimately worried about her sitting alone, like in the dark on the couch. Yeah, no, uh, but I mean, I loved I how their so relationship much. progressed as well because yeah. I think this is also another aspect of this book that made it really work for me and that made it feel real. Because yes, he goes into this, he does the contract, and he he wants this to work for his deal. But as he's catching emotions and feelings for for Lottie, he's reacting in his normal way of like, oh shit, I don't want this relationship. So he closes himself off to her and he acts very cold and very businesslike towards her. Yeah. And he doesn't let her in and he doesn't really form like the actual relationship outside of when they have to pretend. Yeah. And he does this because he genuinely had no interest in a real relationship and he is usually not really good at letting people in so he acts within character as well which i really like because it would have been weird if he would have been like up until this point like never letting anyone in and then all of a sudden like now all the way in my heart it's open you know like he he acts true to himself throughout the book and And it was a little bit her pursuing him too she was like prancing around in little outfits yeah. and not wearing anything under her robe sitting down at a dinner time and he's like what yeah. are you wearing and i love that yeah. like and and i mean she's catching feelings for him too but she's also hesitant yeah with the relationship so it's like they are really starting to like each other but but they don't just jump straight into it it's no. it's kind of nice and like a lot of the sex as well is no not even any kissing in the beginning like she realizes no. when they kiss because they kiss in the office when yeah. dave is there and right. that's like their first kiss but, but they then they don't really intimately. have any kisses where no. it's like just for them like no. they have sex but yeah. there's no kissing involved and but they then, did they have actual sex or did they just fool around no, they just fooled around, and then... But in the shower and stuff, like... But they're having, like, oral sex and stuff like that. Yeah, but, but even, then... but even like, sex sex without kissing, because really? it's up on the on the rooftop uh, in the rain kind of thing. They didn't have sex sex then. That was dry humping. Okay. Or a half sea dry but humping. But it's still no kissing. Still no kissing. So but after like... that, that rooftop scene, which was beautiful, mm-hmm. like, romantic thing that yeah. he did for her... But he they is later. so considerate, this guy. So like, considerate. And he doesn't brag about it, which is no. also like, because she's pissed off that he's blown off this pitch her sister is doing, and she's real angry about it, like the way. But what happened is one of his buildings, there was a fire and people were hurt, and, and he goes out of his way to like make sure that everyone is taken care of, that they get their favorite food delivered to them, that like the families are looked after. Like he's genuinely caring like this uh, with, with everyone who works for him. Like he's... He's genuinely a good person kind of thing. And yeah. and she's learning this slowly but surely, which is also nice that it's not like something he flaunts and he brags about. Like it's just what he does and he doesn't need any praise for it. But it takes her a while to understand that this is happening and that he's an actual genuinely good guy kind of thing. Um, no, but I mean, this book was fantastic. Uh, and you kept reading the series. I haven't because I read that book two is not very good. The weird thing about book two is it sort of copies book one with like mm-hmm. a lot of things, but they're not the same characters, so it doesn't make sense. And there's not yeah. like that much like comedy and like fun playfulness either. It's more or less like he's pursuing her constantly and she wants a real relationship. So she's like going on dates and dates and dates and she's like oblivious mm-hmm. to his interest and she thinks he's a player, so she just doesn't even for one second give him the time of day like Mm -hmm. really just ignores him and he's a little bit of an odd one like throughout the series it continues that he's obsessed with pigeons like saving the pigeons and it's a quirky little side story you know and when he gets drunk because she goes out on a date with somebody and he's like super in love with her but she doesn't know and she he thinks that like this is it she's gonna fall in love with this guy and I'm never going to get my chance at, like, having my, like, one true love because I'm, like, so in love with her. So mm-hmm. he gets drunk in his room and then, like, just 
puts like millions of dollars towards this pigeon foundation. And so <laughs> pigeons are flying rats. Can I just put that out? They there say that because... too. They literally say it in the thing. And he gets so mad at it because he says that nobody knows how intelligent they are. They're like blah blah blah, the dolphins of the flying world, all of this kind of stuff. They have well, all rats this communication. Are also super intelligent. They are still flying rats, man. <laughs> exactly. They're like scavengers. Anyway, so that's a like a weird thing. Anyway, when she decides uh, she's going to go on this third date with this guy, and uh, it's actually Dave's, Ellie's sister, mm -hmm. uh, brother, Ellie's brother, and uh, she really likes him, and but there's not, like, super spark, but she's mm -hmm. like, this is, like, makes so much sense, uh, so I'm just going to continue to see, try and see if a spark will grow, and... Uh, our main guy is sitting there crying at home. He's literally went into his room and he's crying that she's going on this third date. They're by, by the way, living in the same house mm -hmm. uh, because they're uh, working at the same on the same contract in San Francisco. Okay. So he cries in the room and she goes into the room and she's like, "What's up?" And he's like, "I love you." And she's like, "What?" <laughs> And he's like, I just, I, like, if you want to do this with me, do this with me. Don't go on a date with him and do this with him. Do it with me. And she leaves the room and he sort of is like, fuck, that's it. My life is over. Like, super depresso mode. Opens his phone to put more money towards the pigeons. Like, yeah. super weird. And, but meanwhile, she just went to go and tell the um, guy that she's going to pass on the date and, like, send him home in a nice way. And... They start their relationship then. So it takes a really long time mm -hmm. throughout the book for them to get into the relationship. And when they do, that's it. Then they are like, get engaged and then get married. And they are, in the third book, you find out that her and her sister now married to brothers. Which I don't like. It's I really weird, don't right? like that. And they're pregnant at the same time. Too. Yeah, brothers... And they marrying got, sisters is weird. They both get married, like, within a few months of each other, then have babies, you know, within a few yeah. months of each other. So they're really doing everything together. Uh, but it didn't make, like, there was no comedy. There was, like, too much similarities for the first yeah. book to the second book for the second book to be, like, wow. It mm -hmm. wasn't wow. Anyways, then the third book comes, and it's a Friends to Lovers book. Mm -hmm. And you're going to read it, right? Yeah, so I'm not going to spoil it. it. But it's really long. It's long. Yeah. And also takes a long time for their relationship to build, but it makes sense. And I hate this trope so, so much because I just don't get it. Like, I don't see it in real life, it ever happening to me, like with my guy friends, when I'm like later on, like single and like, oh, let's get together. Like, I, it just, it, it wouldn't, it, it's not no. happening in my world. So maybe that's why I find it hard to connect to. But this was the best friends to lovers it was realistic. And that's what you like about this yeah, girl's writing. I do like it. I do like it. And I don't know if it's her writing in general, because I have seen that she's written other books that are maybe not as realistic as this one was. But um, I will give her another chance for sure, because I did love this one. I think I gave it a five star, which is, you know, that's super massive for Leah. For that's super uh, massive for Leah. Because I really liked it. And for what it is, and I will, I will just parrot what I said in the beginning and what a lot of the reviews and book talks said, this book had literally had no business being as good as it was no uh because the premise is all stuff that we've seen done a million times yeah but just so good just the it, best it just did it in, in the, the best, best way way ever and the characters were so awesome and amazing and i love them so much and so much. a book has rarely made me laugh out loud as much as this book did i was literally like trying to read stuff to my husband uh, on the couch and he was like you are making no sense and I'm like, so you don't funny. understand the hilariousness of so this book, funny. you know, but whatever. It was great. You should all read it. So Immediately. quickly off to the bookshop. Uh, we bought ours on Amazon, uh, A Not So Meet Cute by Megan Quinn. Go read it now. And until next time, keep reading and stay cool. <gasps> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> We'd Rather Be Reading is an original podcast by Jerrica Siron and Leah Sanfer. The music for The Penguins, written and performed by David Allred from the album The Transition, courtesy of Erased Tapes. Please check him out on Spotify and check us out on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram at We'd Rather Be Reading and on Twitter at We'd Rather Read. You can also email us at We'd Rather Be Reading the Pod at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.